So now, uh, if you remember, I was working on this drawing of Hawaii, and I've uh, broken it all down into closed up shapes. We don't want any open-ended lines. We want everything to be a shape, like a piece of stained glass. And um, you have to use your own interpretation. Everybody would interpret this differently, but this is what I've done. And I've tried to take, um, I've, I've gone over everything with a pen tip, a pen dipped in the Peebo drawing gum. And I used uh, two different ones, um, the C0 and the C2, uh, pretty much, and maybe a little bit smaller here. So I've completed this. And then I went in, I had done a little bit of changing of some of the lines, and I do have some pencil lines showing, or some uh, graphite transfer paper lines that might still be showing. So I'm taking a kneaded eraser, and I'm trying to erase any of the random lines and also any any graphite transfer paper smudges that might be there before I would start to paint. So even though this is mostly greens, I would be mixing lots of different colors, probably going in with some purples here, some turquoisey blues here, uh, maybe dropping in, um, wetting it and dropping in blues and yellows in here to create those greens and then adding some so a lot of reds in here, wet into wet. And I might go with a real yellow green here against a real dark uh, background. I would do the yellow green first, the lighter color first, and then the dark, so I'm not pulling, accidentally pulling some of the dark in. Even though I do have, we do have that little boundary or that little dam around it uh, to kind of prevent the colors from bleeding together, you still have to be a little careful and go in with uh, uh, smaller brushes um, when you get to that stage. So um, I would be using like a little uh, number four brush to maybe when I got close to it with the dark areas. Um, and also, even though there is a dam, I wouldn't paint this yellow green and then immediately paint the black. You don't want to paint a, a, a section when one section is still wet, even though there's a little likelihood that they'll run into each other, but there might be a little break in the masking fluid or something. Okay, so rather than do this big one, which is a little trickier, I'm going to go to the other one I was working on. And this one, if you recall, um, was the boat in the water um, with the mountains in the background from uh, Glacier National Park. So I, on this one, I used India ink. So I, I have my, my liquid ink, and of course you could use Sharpie or a pit pen, anything that's waterproof. Um, and I, again, I used the C0 and the C2 so you could see the bolder lines were in the mountains. And um, and I did, one of the things I did do is when I was transferring, and this is something you can always do, is the boat was actually more in the middle on the original drawing. And then I started to say, you know, this is probably our focal point. So I don't want it to be smack in the middle. So I ended up lifting up the paper and moving it over when I transferred the boat. Here is the, um, the drawing I did, and you can see the boats right in the middle, and all of a sudden I realized that wasn't going to work. So I, I actually even moved the tree over a little bit. I, I had it closer to the edge, so I moved it over a little bit, transferred almost everything, then I retaped it. And I always put a little tape there so it doesn't move around when I'm transferring. I retaped it and moved it over about here trace the boat and then just added this with uh you know without tracing so uh before i start again i have a lot of random um pencil strokes with if it's masking fluid you can go over and start erasing or you'll lift up the masking fluid even though we eventually use a rubber cement pickup 
to clean off the masking fluid. Um, what we're going to do on this is not worry about the, the ink is all dry and you know I give it at least an hour to dry is I've wrecked paintings before where I put the India ink down and I feel like oh yeah it's dry but it, it was a big glob and underneath that glob was still wet ink so you know make sure it's really dry now I'm going to go in and uh, just pretty strongly erase with my my kneaded eraser and there'll still be some random pencil lines maybe and some a little bit of smudges but it's going to be a lot cleaner and wherever there's some pencil lines left hopefully it's not too dented i actually did move the little the dock or cabin over a little bit so i may have some dented lines there from transferring with the ballpoint pen so i want to just clean it up so it, the colors are as clean as possible um, now just one thing to note um, on this i won't need to peel off any masking fluid but on the other one once everything is dry and you really feel like it's the way you want it to be then you'll go in with a rubber cement pickup and lift off your your masking fluid and you'll have this lovely uh, white outline around everything um, such as this and then you can still go in and adjust some of the white you can add you can go in with a white pen as long as everything's dry and you could add more little skinny lines uh, you can also use a whiteout pen. Um, here's a here's one, but that's the let me grab one. These kind of pens, just white out, and they, you squeeze, and then they make a nice line. But once you put that down, it's not waterproof, so um, at least most of them aren't. So you want to make sure those are the last lines, and you don't end up painting over it with the India ink. And you, can, you don't need to worry too much about changing. You can always peel off your masking fluid and add it. Uh, before you start painting, you can adjust the masking fluid. On this one, I had a few little glitches. I got too much ink here and here, and then I decided to add the line down the middle of the pine tree, and I probably shouldn't have done that, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so... Uh, I'll, we'll see what happens. If I use a pretty dark color, I think it'll be all right. Okay, so I am ready to paint. I'm not going to paint the whole thing, but I'll just do some of it to give you an idea of how I'm going to work with this. Um, so maybe I'll start with the sky, and I'm going to leave this white for now, but I may end up putting some colors. Remember, I'm being a fauvist or a blue rider and it my white outline won't even show unless I put some color or my black out well that's right I'm not doing I'm not doing white outline so I could leave these white with a, a black outline but we'll see how how I um, decide to do that I'll save that for later so I'm going to use a fairly large brush um, uh, you know I might even go with this big round this Goliath <clears throat> and I'm gonna mix some really nice bright color. This is a uh, peacock blue, one of my favorite. It's a whole Holbein brand. And let's also mix some uh, a more middle about middle of the road blue here that isn't so turquoisey, and that's cobalt. So I have that. Now I could wet my area first. That might be a good idea so I don't end up with the uh, area, because this is a fairly big area. And I don't need to wet it all the way to the India ink, but just close to it, just to keep it from drying as I'm working from this end to this end. And, you know, it may end up drying in some areas that uh, will leave little, um, little hard edges, and I don't want to do that. So I'm just giving myself a little head start.
Now here's where you can be a little less, uh, a little uh, artistic about how you apply the colors. Um, I can let them bleed together a little bit. And so it doesn't have to be totally flat. And I do want to get up as close as I can. I hope my head's not getting in the in the way here. So I'm using a smaller brush to push the paint right up to the black outline. Maybe I'll go with a smaller turquoise brush here. And you can see wherever it was wet, it just sort of runs a little bit, but these the edges I left a little bit drier. So I have a nice pointy round. And I'm going right up to the black outline. I can actually even go over the edge a little bit onto the black outline. And as long as it's still nice and and wet, I I can um, play around with it and maybe do some blossoming or some salt. Once I get down into these areas with the foliage, I might want to use a little salt or a little spattering. And I don't mind having that variation in value. Be expressive in your lines. This is going to be white next to the pine tree, which will be nice. It'll be a nice contrast, white or very light clouds. I haven't decided yet if I'll put yellow or something in them. Um, and let's go in with a little manganese blue here. I think that's manganese, yeah. And manganese has a tendency to be a little granular, which is kind of nice. So it, when it mixes with another color, it sort of separates a little bit. Um, so that'll be really make the, the pine tree be nice and stark against the white or light colored clouds. Now I'm getting into little tight spots here. So this is where I might want to grab a smaller brush. Always wet your brush first before you dip it in the paint. And here's where my head might get in the way if I, I, I want to rest my hand um, and then Hold it more like a pencil when I'm getting into tiny areas like this. And feel free to turn your, your painting. I'm using a quarter sheet on this one. You can turn it to get little crevices and light areas or tight areas. So I'm done with this shape. However, this is going to be... Um, blue also this because here's the cloud so I'm going to go ahead and do this part right here and I have to kind of decide what's going on over here um, if I go with a dark blue then um, I might not see the the dark pine tree so I might want to go with a, a little bit lighter or I could even turn this into greenery in the background now at this point, if I start to put a few little, it's almost at the magic moment because the shine is gone. So if I wanted to add some some watery areas here, I might get some variation and some black blossoms or backgrounds. some texture. There's a nice little blossom in there. This is going to be great for blossoming because it's got, it's, I can tell the shine is gone. Where it raises up, it tends to be a little drier. So I, I already have a shape here. So this is still wet, but if I'm real careful, I should be able to do this mountain without it running in. And actually, I don't mind too much if it does run in. So I'm going to go, um, I'll go in with these mountains, I'll be a little cooler or a little more purpley 
And then as I get toward these, these will go a little more green. So let's let's get ultramarine blue here. And I'll add a little bit of permanent rose. And I think I can add those wet into wet. So let me get a big brush here. Maybe another big brush here. Use this. And I'll get some clear water. And again, I won't get down into the details of the pine tops with the water, but I'll just add a little water here. And I'll go in with the ultramarine blue. It's gonna make it a little lighter because I wet it first. And then I'll mix the paint on the, on the paper. So I'm going in with the, the red. Maybe even go in a little more red right on the edge and it'll start to bleed together and make a purpley color and hopefully I'm going to be able to cover up that alley there and it might be nice to have that red right next to the kind of greenish places here in the pine tree dip in the blue again And I'm going to have to go down into a very small, much smaller brush. I made myself work harder by making these pines um, pretty pokey and wiggly. So think about colors that touch other colors and whether you want them to contrast a lot. If I really want to draw attention to a place, I would put contrasting colors such as complementary colors, red or green, next to each other, or dark or light. And this is going to be my focal point. So I would think I want to make if, if it's blue against blue, maybe I'll make this a different color. I could even make it a red boat and against the blue background or a reddish green. Look at that nice blossom I've got right there. Okay. So there I've got a purple mountain majesty and then I can go ahead and do those also. Let's go in with a, a little bit more of a greenish um, color, but not bright green yet. Um, these, I'll save the bright green, more limey green down in here. This will be a little duller, so I'll use ultramarine blue and yellow, but I won't use the lemon yellow. I'll use um, the, the New Gamboge, which is a more orangey yellow, so it's going to make it not quite as, and maybe even a little red, so that it's duller. So it's not going to be bright, bright green. And again, always have a little test paper. One of the things I, I meant to, to mention this, let's see if I can find it. While I was working with the, oh shoot, I can't find it. Um, while I was working with the pens, the dipping pens for either the ink or the um the um, masking fluid. I had a little test paper next to me, so I always, you know, I always dabbed it on the test paper first to make sure it wasn't coming out in a big glob. So this is looking pretty blue, but it's heading more toward greenish than than this uh, mountain. In fact, I can I can add a little more yellow to it while it's on there and greenify it a little bit.
but I don't I don't want a bright green. If I was using the blue that's more turquoisey, I would have gotten a much brighter green. And maybe I'll go just a little more. I'm gonna go right next to it and see hope that they don't run together. But if they do, it's not the end of the world. It's okay to have a little bit of that leakage. And notice how I'm tapering off into a yellow. So you're, I think what I'm showing you here is even though this is one shape, within that shape, you can have some variation of color or texture. So I think I would repeat this turquoise color in the uh, water and maybe um, leave these, or maybe go very light and then leave this, oops, leave these, go back over these areas with um, a lighter or a darker color for the, the ripples in the water. So let me do one, one little bit down here of the light green um, and then I'll mix up the dark green for this pine tree so you can kind of see what's going to happen. Yeah, maybe I'll do the pine tree first so my hand won't get in it. Uh, so on this one, I'll use um, a blue, and I think I'll use that, uh, that really bright peacock blue again, maybe with a little ultramarine. Another way I can make a dark green is with uh, the phthalo green and then add a little bit of burnt sienna to it. A nice yellow is this uh, quinacrid on gold, so I can add that. And I'm getting some pretty nice rich greens there. A little bit more of the quin gold. So blue and yellow. And I'm careful not to put my hand in it. And um, I'm hoping that with this fairly dark green, I can cover up my line that I sort of put at the last minute for the um, the tree trunk. And then I immediately thought, ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> but you can't erase India ink. All you can do is try and disguise it and tone it down. It's not going to obviously not going to be as standing out as much once I get the paint on it, but it really stood out as black against white. Let me grab a little lemon yellow here and there, and probably should be using a smaller brush. <laughs> you are making it as hard on yourself as what I did with all these tiny little sticky outy shapes. Um, and if I wasn't doing this as a demo, I would really be taking my time and, and putting my head down and moving the moving everything around, but I kind of have to think differently on a demo. <clears throat> So once again, I'm getting some variation. I love when blue, dark, dark green is there is to throw a little, le kind of a strong lemon yellow in it. Oops, got there. Let me get this out of here. And I don't, I don't want any red to get in there right now because I don't want this to be complimentary color dull. So if I add a little lemon yellow here and there, it kind of, uh, pops it out a little. So this uh, this dark green pine tree right here is starting to stand out. I could go in with just some plain blue um, and make some areas just blue. And it'll all kind of read as a green tree, even though there's variations in it. I've gone more, more blue down in there. I'm 
And then I'll add some more of that yellow. Again. Speaking of contrast, variation, variety. Not only do I have a variety of shapes and sizes and spacing, but I'm also getting some variation of color in there. Now, since this is going to be kind of lime green right here, maybe this is where I should not be putting the lightest light. And I should go back into blue. So it'll contrast against that very yellow green that I'm going to put right there. And uh, I don't know what the top of the roof is going to be, but I'm thinking it might be kind of a, a sky blue also. So I can have a little more yellow next to it. So I'm always thinking about contrast. How am I going to contrast? Let's go in with just some blue blue here. that lemon yellow. And I didn't go right up to the lines and I went out of the lines in some places, so don't worry too much. A nice thing about this too is you can always go back in and redo some of the black outlines with the Sharpie or something else. So look at that variation. So I'm just going to do this one last thing. Um, and again, I'm thinking uh, that this boat might end up being red. And I'm going to hold that for last. So I will be able to say, okay, what's going to be the color that will contrast the most? Now here I have a very reddish purple mountain. And so I'm going to have to repeat that. So I think I'll go in more reddish purple here. And that might actually be the color of the boat, too, only more red and not as purple. So I'm going to wet this. And you don't have to wet your areas first. I didn't wet the pine tree. Um, I'm going to get this red out of here so it doesn't get in the yellow. Sometimes your yellow gets yucky. And it's time to clean it out with your sponge. And it's time to get fresh water here. So every so often I'll clean out my palette, clean out my, my yellow. That's about the only color that I need to clean out. Okay, so I have my fresh water, and I think this time I might start with yellow. Make that the predominant color here. This is lemon yellow, so it'll be a brighter green. I don't yet know what the shoreline is going to be either. That might end up being a kind of a dull color around the boat to make it stand out. So now I want to grab some turquoise blue, and I think this uh, manganese blue might be perfect. Ooh, lovely green. I don't want it to all be the same, so I'll put in a little bit more of a cool blue in here, maybe in the corner. More of that manganese, and maybe even leaving a little of the pure yellow here and there poking out. Let's 
grab some more yellow. And at this point, I think I'll put a little salt on it. And because it's foliage, I think that'll be nice. And I might do the same over here and maybe over here too. So that will balance out that. I'll do one more and then we'll call it quits because I know you guys are tired of watching this. <laughs> so let's put some more yellow here. And i got to be careful because that's still wet or slightly wet. And see how I designed these, um, I don't know if you can see it, but the bushes are coming forward. So I made them come down a little bit, but they had sort of a flat bottom to show that they were growing. Um, the, the bottom is a little flatter, or more horizontal than the top. So it shows they're growing on the ground. <clears throat> so once again, so they see that contrast between that uh, that dark green and this yellow yellow green. It's fun to let the colors just do what they want instead of mixing up a, a you know a Home Depot color that's all the same for your walls. Let the colors uh, kind of bleed together and get those little surprises, which is wonderful for um, watercolor. The other thing is, do I want to leave some white? And this boat, the white is the winner. If everything's covered up um, and there's no white, uh, you don't have that sparkle. So what I might end up doing is putting like pink or something in the clouds and then leaving parts of the making this a darker red here and leaving parts of the boat white because again that white is often the winner of the of the show if everything else is dark okay so i've got that balanced with that and you can see how i'm building it up and again a lot of question marks don't have it all worked out as you go but you know think it through as as it emerges and what's going to make something else stand out Okay. Good luck. This is the fun part.